go. So please welcome. Let's go. Thank you. Hey guys. Hi. Whitley wanted to say hello. You want to show me? You want to show me cat? Not. You want to show me cat? That's Tay Dad. Okay. <laughs> show me cat. Hold it up. Hold okay. Up. You want to go back to mommy? Um, stop. You want to go back to mommy? Stop. Go, mommy. go get her. Go get mommy. <laughs> you want to go get her? Stop. Okay. She wanted to show you all his, her cat. <laughs> Give it up for Whitley. Hey, I've heard a lot of incredible things today. Have you guys got a lot of value out of today? Yeah. This, is a, this is a strange setup. I feel like I'm like right here with you. <laughs> this is good. Now, um, good to see everybody. Glad to be back. Um, I came and did the event with Joe right before the entire economy shut down and we were locked in our houses for what seems like forever. So I just want to shout out to Joe, all the other speakers. I thought this was really incredible. If you guys got a lot of value, make as loud of a noise as you can. Now, how many people here are already following me to some extent okay well let me try the other way who's not well okay okay few people cool well mom I'm Ricky um, no I, today uh, you know he gave me 30 minutes to speak so I don't have a lot a lot of time I really think the most value is going to be more Q&A so what I want to do is basically tell you my thoughts on the market right this second, kind of what I feel like, where we are, um, and kind of give you some direction, right, and some certainty, because I feel like maybe, for me, there's a lot of certain, like this is the, this is my most favorite time in the market right this second, because last year, I say last year, it feels weird to call 2022 last year, but last year, there was a lot of uncertainty, right? We know what was gonna happen. There was a lot of uncertainty in 2020, when the pandemic hit. There was a lot of uncertainty in 2022 as everything went to the roof. Um, and I feel like a lot of people feel like there's a lot of uncertainty this year, but this is the year I feel like there's a lot of certainty in the market. So I wanna help you guys if you, if you feel like the market, you know, if, if you feel like there's uncertainty in the market, that's what I wanna do, right? So if you, most of everybody's been following me for a long time, so you know that I'm kind of the voice of reason in the market. I'm the voice of positivity in the market. Um, I want people to have a better outlook on, regardless of which way the market goes, you win. Because I've always said, and I've always believed that real estate's a win-win no matter what. The only reason, people don't fail in real estate, right? People quit before they start succeeding. And, and a lot of times it takes way longer than they expected. And they, they, it's, it's 20 times harder than what they thought it was gonna be, okay? Does anybody disagree? Like when you got in the real estate business, okay, you probably had a preconceived notion that it was gonna be really hard, but was it not 20 times harder than, than your expectations? Yeah. Disappointment, frustration. Every single agent in this room in the beginning of your career went through disappointment and frustration. And, and, and almost probably a case of depression, right? In your first year. I don't care who you are or how great of an agent you are now, or if you're Ryan Serhant, or any of the, the great, even Bo, any of these great agents that have made so much money and sold so much real estate, their first year was hell. And so, shout out to everybody here that has made it through that part of your career, and now you're to the, you know, every year gets easier and easier. And especially if you put the right systems, and the right processes in place, to actually scale your business. So the first thing I wanna talk about is scaling because a lot of people probably in this room because average wise, what you find is, is agents build their business up to 150, 200,000 a year and then they stay right there forever. They never really break through to the 250, to the 300, to the 500, to the million dollars a year. And they just kind of feel stuck. And so the first thing to understand about that is that what has happened 
is that you've basically tricked yourself into thinking that if you just worked your database that you've built over the last two or three years, then you're going to continue to grow. But you're not. Unless you're adding new people into your database and meeting new people and adding people into your, your sphere. See, your database is your sphere. We call sphere of influence people that we already know, right? Your mom, your dad, your, your, um, your gym teacher, your, the person that cuts your hair, the waiter at the restaurant. But as you get into real estate, your clients become your sphere. And now it's a battle, it's a game, it's a, it's a contest, it's a challenge to see how large of a sphere you can build in your, in your market. Most people either do really well at maintaining their database, which only maintains your business, or they're really well at selling and not maintaining and just going and finding another client selling, finding another client selling, but nothing on the back end to retain those clients. Just think, if your business and your systems was revolved around you know, meeting new people and selling, but then having a mechanism on the back end to stay in touch with them forever, how massive your business could be over the three to five to 10 year period. And the, the, the accumulation of people within your database that know who you are, right? And I was on Kevin's podcast and they were asking about like how do you, how do you follow up with clients you know, in a manner where there's a good chance they're going to use you as an agent, right? How do you, you know, stand out from all the other agents that are out here basically doing the same thing? And the answer is communication skills. When you talk to them that first time that they think, wow, this person is different. I can feel it oozing off of them how much they care about me. They weren't trying to sell me. They were trying to figure out what I'm trying to do so they can help me. But 99% of agents are just, you want to sell your home? Here's the prices. Would you sell it if I could get this? Uh, I don't know you, <laughs> number one. And if I did, I'm not going to use you, right? I could throw a rock and hit one of you. But when you approach people in a way where you're treating them like family. See, when you get to the point where you're treating your prospects like family, now you really got something because they feel that. When I lost everything in 2008, right? It's really 2005, six, seven, and went completely broke, homeless, sleeping in my car, eating out of people's refrigerators, um, sleeping on people's couches, roofing houses, working on an oil rig. When I came back in the business and took the lessons I learned from that moment, right? The two lessons were this. When I was on the oil rig, I realized that my clients were still buying and selling when I was out of the business. The clients that I represented in 2003 and four, they were still buying in six, seven, and eight. They were selling bad assets and buying great assets. And I was like, bam, if I would have maintained the relationship with those clients, I would have, I would have represented them on those deals. But I wasn't in the mindset at the beginning of my career to create relationships and stay in touch with people. Why? Because I could make 10 phone calls, find somebody who wanted to make 100000 or 200000 Sure, I'll make 100000 a day. Cool, sign this. I'll sell your condo. Very cold transaction. Here's my 30000 There's your 150000 Have a great life. I'll go make 10 more calls to make another 20000 I don't need relationships. I can just make 10 calls and make twenty grand. 10 calls make twenty grand. That's the market I was born into. So I didn't understand the importance until I lost everything and had to really think, okay, I'm the hardest working guy that I know. I'm the most honest, dependable person. Why did I fail? How did I lose everything? Right? And so, so I had to really, you know, that, that, was a, that, was a, one of the, that was the greatest moment in my career was losing everything and going back to zero because it made me kind of figure out who I was but also understand the business and understand cycles of the market. And when you understand cycles of the market and you understand what I'm saying about building, if you build a relational business, then it doesn't matter what the market does. Because the second thing I learned was that closings happen every single day, no matter what, forever. Because I was in the mindset that nothing was happening. And maybe there was two or three deals, but I wasn't actually looking I'm just assuming because all my clients went away. 
And that's, what, that's the trap we get caught in. When a market shifts, you've got clients that you're working with, and when whatever happened that made that market shift, it scared everybody, temporarily. But it made everybody just take a step back and say, wait a minute, let me see what's going on. That's what happened with pandemic. That's what happened with interest rates. Interest rates went up in March. What happened? A lot of buyers took a step back, and they just wanted to see what was going to happen. Uh, some of those buyers are still on the fence right now, waiting to see what's going to happen. Some of those buyers have come back, though, right? Let me just catch the temperature of the market here, because it's different everywhere. M markets are super local, right? But let's just say since the first of the year, since it's been so close, are we seeing a, an uptick in buyer activity right now? Yeah. Okay. Are, are we seeing... You know, like nothing crazy, of course, but are we seeing like a lot more showings on our listings? Are we seeing any multiple offers on stuff? Okay. What have I been talking about for a year ever since uh, interest rates started going down? We're fixing to have another surge because the thing is, guys, is that when we see a reduction in transactions, that's only building up demand. Demand is building. That's why when the pandemic hit and the entire economy was shut down for 45 days, we we're locked on our houses, all the businesses were shut down, except for, you know, Walmart and a couple of the others. We're sitting in our homes and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, wow, this reduction in transaction is going to create such a massive surge on the back end. So I put a video out. I could sit here and tell you a lot of things that I think about that I've put out online, I could name a lot of different things where I'm like, this is gonna happen. And it's not because I'm a, what do you call those people, genies? <laughs> Whatever, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> but the fact is, is that I've been through these market cycles so many times, it's like when you, the market moves in slow motion. It's like you can see what's happening a mile away. So, the. I want to run this scenario past you to try to calm you down just a bit. And then I want to talk about the current market and then take some questions. Because I don't have a lot of time to talk. I could sit up here and talk for five hours straight about stuff. Um, but basically, um, you know, when you look at the market uh, right now, okay, is anybody, okay, y'all are going to lie to me, so. Let's just be honest with each other, right? This is the nest, right? This is the happy, you know, this is safe. How many people are actually kind of like worried about the market? Okay, good. Good, good. There's some people worried, great. And there's other people too, I know. But think about this. John and Jason. If the market went down 50% price-wise, okay? Because that's what it did in, in 2008, right? I'm sure no one here thinks that the market's going to crash harder than 2008, except for Patrick Beck David, right? I still don't even believe that he actually believed that, and, and uh, I wonder what he thinks now. But if the market crashed harder than 2008, okay, think about that scenario. Prices go down 50%, okay? Now, what you have to think of is, oh, if the market... Worst case scenario happens, how do I crush it during the worst possible outcome of the market? Well, let's think about it for a second. If it goes down 50%, how easy is it going to be to sell properties at half price, number one? That's just off the top. That's just off the top of my head. Let's go a little deeper, though. What about investors that own properties? Well, they're not selling them. They, they've got, they're making rental money. What are they going to do? Buy more right? What about sellers? Well, most sellers aren't going to sell. If, it's, if they're going to sell for half price, they're just going to continue living there. So they don't care. They're just going to ride it out to the prices come back up, right? Right. If, if they want to upgrade, they're going to buy a house for half off. They may have to sell theirs for half off, but they're getting what they want for half off. Like there's not, there's not a sector in the market that doesn't benefit as far as our business is concerned, worst case scenario. 
So if you can wrap your head around worst case scenarios and then worst case scenario doesn't happen, then how good off are you? Right now we're down what? 10, 15% price wise from the peak. We still ended up up, we still ended up on the year by the end of the year. It's like 1% or something nationally. Different markets are different. We're down from the peak, okay? Um, but now where are we going? So just to finish off with the 2008 scenario, it would be incredible. I got back in the business in 2008, speaking of 2008, and let me tell you something, that was an, an amazing time to be a real estate agent. It was so easy to sell properties for half price. It was easy, it was way easier then than now. And these buyers were ecstatic. And then guess what? Relationships. They're my fam now. Now they're gonna, as the market rebounds, they sell it for twice as much, upgrade to something else, refer eight people to me. It's literally how it became number one in my market. Because all the foreclosure agents that didn't answer the phone, I said, okay, I, I can play that game. I'll just go represent the buyers on your deals. And when the foreclosures go away, you'll go away. But I'll still have the properties as my clients. I'll resell them and get referrals and I'll beat you in, in six years. <laughs> That's how I thought. I'll beat you in six years based on what I'm doing now. That's how you guys have to think. So when you understand the philosophy that the market doesn't matter, like it has zero to do with your success, your success is not predicated on anything that the market does, okay? Now we're, that's the surface level of this. That's gonna get you to an average success. And now you build your business and think, nothing matters. I'm from Alabama, so I got nothing matters. <laughs> But when you think of Alabama, right, what's the image you have in your mind? <laughs> like, like, like mud, you think mud, you think like, like water boy, like, I'm down there like, mama said, <laughs> Alligators mad because they got all them teeth and no toothbrush. <laughs> but the point is, is that I'm in Alabama. Nothing matters. Okay, so that 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 gets you to that average success. If you want to go to the top, though, right? Th this will get you to two, three hundred thousand. But if you want to get to the million, if you want to get to the two million, if you want to get to the place where you're number one in your MLS, then you take. You're, you know, you've got this solid foundation that nothing can take you down. No market shift can take you down. You realize the cycles. You know what's going to happen. To take it to the next level is, okay, now you've got to pay attention to the market and think about, okay, what's the most certain outcome that could happen in the market? And let me game plan around that most certain outcome, and I'll put all my chips on that certain outcome. And if it hits, then I'll hit big. But if it doesn't hit, I win anyway because nothing matters. And that's where you can start taking a few risks on your time towards building a business to take advantage of what the most certain outcome of the market is. You with me? Can I get a water boy? Okay. So you got me. Most certain outcome, all chips in, it doesn't matter anyway, let's go. All right, let's talk about the most certain outcome in the current market. Where do I begin? So, inflation, okay? Does anybody here feel like inflation is going up right now? Yeah, y'all feel like it's going up? It's been coming down since June. Not in New York. Yeah, well, it, it, but if you look at a chart and actual facts, coming down. I spent half the money to come here that I, would, that I would have spent just three months ago. I just went to Vegas. I spent $3,500 for just plane tickets in October. And I spent $2,200 this trip last week. I'm spending, I spent $1,700 to go to Orlando, and I just bought tickets for $900. That's inflation. That's supply and demand. The Fed rate coming up has, has helped consumers because now we're getting stuff cheaper. 
I know you guys may not be feeling it because it is local. You know, I need to dig more into what you're talking about here. The what? Come to Alabama. We, we, we like, yeah, we create our own eggs. Like, I don't know nothing about eggs. I, I got my own eggs. Nevertheless, guys, nevertheless, let, let me ask you this. You think by the end of the year inflation is going to be higher or lower? Okay. There we go. I got somewhere with you. The 30-year fixed, the 30-year fix is tied to inflation, not the Fed rate. Fed rate is, is tied to uh, credit cards, auto loans, HELOCs. Mortgage rates are tied to inflation, which is tied to the 10-year treasury. Those are all correlated very closely. If you look at a chart through history, incredibly correlated. So if, you, so if we all agree, and every guru in the world does, that inflation is coming down, what does that mean for, for mortgage rates? Coming down. They've already come down quite a bit, right? They went from 7.2 to now they're 6, basically. They'll continue to come down as we get more data around inflation that is coming down, and the, new, and the 10 year treasury has come down. It's all going to come down. And that's what's causing this spike in buyer activity that you guys say that you're getting. Last year, we had 28% increase week over week for mortgage applications. You know, I'm, I'm put, I've been putting out so much content for the past six months about all of this happening. And, you know, the keyboard warriors are saying, well, you know, if it's so great, then why are, more, why are we at a 12-year low for mortgage applications? I'm like, bro, this happens in stages, man. You're not going to get, like, Okay, more people looking online, you know, showings, uh, uh, mortgage applications, pending deals, and closings in one day. This is a process. People are becoming more comfortable with the situation, and we're seeing it. So we feel like mortgage rates are going to come down, okay? We all kind of agree there because we feel like inflation is going to come down. Now, a very interesting fact. Every single year, inventory to the moon and straight down. If you look at a chart, I have a chart. I just, I was denied on slides. If, if you look at a chart of inventory every year from 2000 whenever to today, every single year, it's like a straight up line inventory, straight down, straight down, plummeting, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, every single year. 2021, the year of the boom. It was crazy. Inventory went up at the same time of year it always does, straight up. Nobody's talking about that. Then it came down. Now it's come up. And all the media says, inventory through the roof. But now it's dropping. Since August, it's been dropping. And we're in that time of the year where it plummets. And guess what? We're not even half of where we were pre-pandemic. And it's, and it's going to go down lower? Yeah, it, it, every year. You can look at Redfin data. You can look at every different entity that collects data on this. Uh, MBS, everybody. And you'll see that, that inventory drops all the way through February every year and then starts rising back up. It'll rise back up and then it'll go back down. It, it's going to happen. If history has anything to do with it, remember what's most certain going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. Interest rates could shoot to the moon. Inflation could shoot to the moon. Inventory could shoot to the moon. Prices could go down. We don't know, we don't know what's going to happen, but we know this. None of that matters because closings happen every day. So we have that backup plan that the market's never going to go anywhere. We're always going to succeed. It's just a matter of, are we going to put our eggs in, in a basket of a sector of the, the way we think the market's going to go so we can explode with it? Or are we just going to keep playing the surface level game and just stay right here and stay safe? But the thing is, is when you go for it, you win either way, even if it doesn't work out. So if, 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 if uh, inventory is coming down, if interest rates are coming down, we're already seeing an uptick in buyer activity. We're already seeing, you know, it heat back up. What do you think is going to happen? Now, another key data point, formations of families, which means basically people coming into their 30s, right? Formations of families is approaching all-time highs, and it will continue to grow every year based on the birth rates in, 19, in the 1980s. It's just... Simple math. And so the formation of, of families, that's not people that want houses. That's people that need houses. This is like real demand. 
This isn't like a, somebody wants to upgrade because they're tired of the layout. These are real people that need houses, all right? So builders are down 30, 40%, right? Nationally. We've got inventory dropping anyway. We've got interest rates dropping, going to continue to drop slower and slower. Buyers are already coming out. See, I didn't think this was going to happen until spring, but it's already starting to happen. Why? Because we've all been, all this demand has been building since March when everybody took a step back. This is all happening right in front of us. And so the way that this market is going over the next, you know, for the rest of this year now, it's only going to get busier and busier and busier. And we're going to have less and less to sell. And all the buyers, the majority of the buyers, like it's heating up now, but just give it some time. It's going to get worse. And guess what? Inventory is going to be lower. And now everybody's going to be fighting over the same house. That's what I see happening. That's what I see happening in the market. Um, so if, that, if that's what we feel like just based on the data and based on history, we feel like will certainly happen, then let's go all in and prepare for that to happen. Right? But then what? What normally happens? The inventory comes up and then what? It comes down. It's going to come down again. Right? And where are interest rates going to be? Where are, uh, you know, wh where's all the data points going to be at that time? And so this is something you watch if you're going to be like the highest of producers and you say, okay, I see the little opportunity right here in the market. I'm going to, I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm going to exploit this. And that's how you become the top agent in your market. And I never really paid attention, honestly, because I was so busy just trying to build my business. And so that, that's another testament right there for you. That if you go all in on people and trying to create five new relationships a day with property owners in your market, create those great first impressions where they really feel like you care about them and follow that up with a weekly email. This is what you guys all should be doing right here. Just make it real simple for you. Make calls all morning, social media all afternoon, and do a weekly email. And you're done. You do that for five to 10 years, you're absolutely done. Now, who do you call? Whoever you want to call. I don't want to cold call. It's too cold. I need to have the reassurance that they know, at least know who I might be. Okay. The thing is, all lead generation activities, it's the same thing. Every single one of them are geared to collect data. You collect their data and then you talk to them on the phone. Every single lead gen activity. Debating if I should ask you guys. I'm gonna do it for fun. Does anybody know a lead gen activity that you don't, you, you, that the purpose of it isn't just to collect data and call them on the phone? Anybody? Come on, please. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, you're gonna go meet them, shake their hand, get their business card, and then how are you gonna follow up? Uh, right, and then just hope they call you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that does work, by the way, right? That does work, but I can't wait on people to call me and initiate, right? I have to be the most successful right now. I'm not going to wait on something to happen. I got to go make something happen. That's good, though. It does work. I saw two hands. Is that lead gen that doesn't, uh, collect data for you then to call them. That doesn't collect data? Yeah, that doesn't collect data for you then. Uh, What's that? Like advertising on front benches. I mean, when they call you, you've got their data, and you're talking to them on the phone now. Right back to having a conversation. You got their data, talking to them on the phone. Correct? Yeah. Um, I have a question. On the weekly email, um, how do you personalize it? Your well, I'm, I'm going to get to Q&A in a second. Okay. I just want to take one more, if somebody has it, of a legion activity that doesn't involve collecting data and talking to them on the phone. Looking up addresses and then finding out who the owner is. Mm -hmm. pages, yeah. That's collecting data and then calling them, right? Yeah. Same thing. How about volunteering? 
when you're volunteering, you're sitting there hoping that people are signing in or you're collecting some kind of data so that you can follow up with them later, right? It's everything. everything. Not, you're just, well, then how, are you, how are you doing business, volunteering? You're building relationships. How do they call you? How do they talk to you? Are you talking to them about business? What are you doing? How, how, do, you, how do you go from there to doing a deal with one of, somebody? Collect data and call. <laughs> one more. Okay. Well, that's why I'm trying to find something. Because here's the thing, guys. If I can find something different, then I'm going to start talking about that. But every single lead gen activity is designed to collect data and talk to them on the phone. Well, Zillow calls me with the buyer on the line. You're talking to them on the phone. We're right back to the same stuff. And so the name of the game, guys, is communication skills. Can you take anybody at any given time and have a conversation with them and they feel like, wow, this person is, feels like family? That's the name of the game. And when you get to that level, you don't care who you're talking to. Then you're like, how can I be the most efficient? Oh, well, there's you know, a million people here. I can't talk to all of them. I need to talk to the most efficient people. Who is that? The property owner is the only exact property you want to sell. Let me just talk to as many of those people as possible and create as many friendships as I possibly can. Yeah, and, they're, and you're going to put them in a database, I'm sure, right? Data. And then, you know, you can send stuff to them. Hope, like, the whole advertise hoping they call is great. That's what I do with the weekly email. Like, I'm hoping my database calls me. That's awesome. But I'm not in the beginning. Like, at the end of your career, you can live off that. But when you're building your business, you got to be initiating conversation after conversation after conversation or nothing's going to happen. Maybe you have a team and maybe you've hired somebody to make those calls for you. Awesome. I don't care. Somebody's, making, somebody's having conversations. A couple quick little tips. Um, and then I want to take some questions since you guys are in the mood. At the end of every prospecting call you guys have right now, you know, you have your call, you're talking to them, whatever it is. If they want to do something great, go there. If it's more of a relationship building conversation, we'll do something later. We'll call you. Here's my info, all that. Say, hey, let me, let me, before you go, let me ask you this. If I had a great deal on a rental property, would you be interested? And see what they, just see what they say. If they're like, oh, yeah, what you got? Well, I got stuff all the time. What, what, what kind of properties are you interested in? Single family, duplex, multifamily, commercial? What do you like? And now get all the criteria and put them in your investor database. Make a list of investors. These people that own these properties you guys are calling, they're investors too. And if you can ask that question at the very end, you've got somebody else on your investor list and now you can build that list up and guess what? Go find them some investment properties. We all need to be building our investor list up. While we're selling residential, I don't know what you guys sell, commercial, residential, condos, whatever it is. Why not, since you're there anyway, and the, and, and the, the relationship's kind of dying for now, see if you can revive it with well, seeing if they might be interested in a great rental property. And if you had a bad conversation, right? It's like, or this, this would be a good one if somebody's like, well, who is this and I don't like you and you're an eight, one of them agents. It's like, sir. Listen, I'm just calling to see if you like rental properties. I, got, I might have some good ones for you. You know, it's like, wait a minute, I'm trying to bring you value over here. Right? And by the way, I'm not trying to get you to sell your house, David. <laughs> right? So that, that's one thing I, I think maybe a few of you might use that. That might be something useful. Um, but at the end of the day, I want to I cover one of three things and I'll let you guys decide and then take questions. Calls, social media, or weekly email? Okay, calls, raise your hand. Social media, raise your hand. Um, weekly email? Okay, calls when? All right. I'm just going to cover it for like two seconds and then take some questions. I don't care where you get your leads from, right? Zero to Diamond is not a cold calling program. It's a communication program. It's, I don't care where you get your leads from, I just want you to understand how you need to communicate with 
your prospects, what to do with them after, help you create a process to take them from prospect to closing, whether it be next month or five or 10 years down the road, it doesn't matter. So the first thing to understand about calls is that when you're talking to a prospect, you shouldn't care if they want to buy or sell or not. That's rule number one. Um, and that'll get you so far because it's, it's almost like it helps you communicate better too because there's no pressure. Because a lot of us, when we got in the business, right? We got in the business because we want to help people. And then we listen to our coaches and our trainers and we get these scripts that's trying to get us to high pressure people into doing stuff. And we're like, man, this is really just crazy. This is wild. I feel weird. I feel awkward. Uh, these people are hanging up on me and all this stuff. And so we, go, we all go through that stage, right? Where we're just trying to close, close, close. And then hopefully you saw a video of mine or somebody who's preaching this side of it. Where, because I wish somebody would have told me this from day one. Like, you don't care if they buy or sell. Connect with them. Figure out what it is they want to do. And then put together a game plan to help them do it. That's how you build a career. Because those people are going to come back to you, refer tons of people to you. Right? Does, anybody know my, does everybody know my scripts? Okay, I don't have to go through that. Zero2diamond.com, all free. You got it. Um, I'm going to leave it with that because at the end of the day, like if you can wrap your head around the mentality of how you need to think when communicating to people, here's an exercise. Next time you're talking to your mom, dad, brother, best friend from high school, cousin, you know, your bet, you're an agent in the office that you feel real comfortable with, take a second when you're in the middle of that conversation and just subconsciously as they're talking, think about how comfortable you are in that, in that conversation, how comfortable they are, your, how relaxed you are, your shoulders, you're not nervous, you, the tone of your voice, how fast you're talking, um, you know, everything from A to Z. And take a mental snapshot of that moment, of, that, of those emotions, and think that's what Ricky's talking about. Because if you can emulate that exact feeling when you're talking to your prospects, you're inching closer and closer to mastery of being able to communicate. Because when you're talking to your mom or dad, that's, that's mastery communication. You can you feel like you can tell them anything. They are listening. You feel comfortable. If you, can, if you can get to that level with like prospects you don't know, then you have made it, ladies and gentlemen. If I haven't met you before, it was nice to meet you. I wish you guys nothing but the best in 2023. Let me know what I can do to help you, and much love. Um, thank you, guys. If you guys have any, any questions.